Have you ever wanted to get an autograph from a musician you love? Well, my friend Rex has over 3,000 in his collection and he has acquired them one by one from musicians past and present. I talk with Rex about how to go about it, tips and tricks if you want to get that signature on an LP of yours on this episode, Talking About Records. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Final, a small chain of independent record shops in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you're not local, but you are in the U.S., you can shop with us anytime at ntxfinal.com and would love it if you'd subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and follow us across social media on Facebook and Instagram. The handle is at NTX Vinyl. Let's talk about autograph collecting. This is a very unique subject and honestly one that I do not know a lot about. I have not seeked out a lot of autographs over the years. I have very few in my collection. Um, I do cherish the ones I do have. But um, So I went to an expert on this, my friend Rex Burks, who many of you may know from the uh, now spinning Facebook group that we sponsor. Rex is the, uh, the mastermind behind the daily challenge in the group. Um, amongst many other things, he is a uh, archivist, he is historian of music and physical media. Um, he has got one of the um, most complete collections of capital records in the world, meaning all of the titles that they've ever released. He's working his way on accumulating those. The other thing he does is he chases autographs. So he has been doing this for years and years and years at venues, uh, small and large, from musicians and celebrities, uh, through the mail, all kinds of tips and tricks coming your way in regards to how to go about this. It's a, it's a really unique culture. It's something that, again, I don't have a lot of experience in, so I'm excited to uh, talk with Rex about the art of autograph collecting. Here is our conversation. Rex, how you doing, my friend? I am great. Thank you so much. And I'm glad we're finally having this conversation. We've yes, it's been a long this. time coming. We've been talking about having a discussion around graphing, as it is known, which I'm yes. super excited to learn more about. This is not something that I am super knowledgeable about. And that's what excites me about having this conversation and talking with someone like yourself, who has done this for years and years and years. So um, what, what the idea. The, yeah, one so, of the things that's exciting to me about talking with you about this is because I know I know you love record collecting and I know you love live music and the, the hobby of graphing is something that really brings those two things together. If you can take your record that you love and bring it to the concert that you love yeah. and get the artist to autograph the record, you're, you're sort of tying your two hobbies together. So, so Absolutely. maybe, maybe if, if nothing else is accomplished, we will accomplish getting you to, you know, UGI to try, you know, bringing your two hobbies together you know, you're, you're, you're fan of records and you're fan of live music, bring it together. And, and yeah. by the way, for all your viewers, I actually have GI's autograph on his South FM album in my collection. So there you go. There you so go. He is, he is yes. both the, the, my interviewer today, but also a, a, a target of my autograph collecting. <laughs> so I think first and foremost, Rex, is we're going to talk about the, the concept, the procedure, how to execute, um, acquiring an autograph from a musician or it could work for a celebrity or just about anybody who's known but i think first and foremost is why and i think that's i know i think it's no brainer that people love to get people's autographs it's it's a memento it, it kind of you know it's it's a, a way to capture that you met them those types of things but from your perspective tell me why you do this as someone who actually chases after these for a lot of different uh, a lot of different again, musicians and things like that. Like, what's the why for you? Like, why are you chasing autographs? Absolutely. So let me let me first address what you just said. So in this conversation, we're going to talk specifically about musicians um, because that's, you know, singers, band members, songwriters. That is one yeah. approach to this hobby. I've also done a lot of baseball autographs and other people do basketball players or Hollywood actors. Sure. There's a little nuance to each one of those things. So today yeah. we're going to specifically talk about music. Some of what we say will apply to any kind of autograph chasing, but but today yeah. we're specifically talking about music. And music and baseball are really the two that I've ever done in any significant oh, quantities. Um, and just by way of introduction, I've 
I've added to my collection probably well over 3,000 music autographs. And that is, you know, personally gotten um, band members, singers, songwriters, you know, producers, anybody that's on any of this music that we love. Um, when I've had the chance, I've gotten their autograph. And and that's, like I said, well over 3,000 at this point. And I know that because I keep a spreadsheet of all of them. So um, so in terms of why, yeah. um, you already alluded to it. It's It's a rush. It is a rush to be in the right place at the right time and hand that record to that person and have them sign it. You know, I, that never gets old for me. Um, sure. you know, anytime anyone finds a hobby, and obviously this hobby is not for everyone and everyone finds different hobbies that are for them. But when you find a hobby that gives you a rush, then that's for you. And, and for me, you know, that moment when I'm in the right place at the right time and I can hand that item to them and get that autograph, that is such a rush. It's an adrenaline rush. It's a dopamine rush. And, you know, when, when that is, when that works, it's so good. Right. Yeah. And, and, and if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. Find something else you enjoy. Sure, right. Sure. Some people like climbing rocks and some people like lifting heavy weights and some people like building things. And, you know, there's, there's plenty of hobbies for everybody. So I'm not, I'm not here to suggest that autograph hunting is for everyone, but if you, oh, sure. if you try it and you love it, you're going to want to do it again and again and again. And, and it is really that moment of that rush. And, so that yeah. rush is definitely the in person, though. So that's the first thing we want to talk about. It's kind yeah, of a different it's, way. It's in person for sure. Um, yeah. And but there are, you know, I talk about four ways to get an autograph. The, the in person autograph is the gold standard. That means you were standing there, the celebrity was standing there, and they signed your thing right in front of you. That's that's the gold standard. That's yeah. you know, for anyone who owns any autograph of any celebrity. That's the best is to have. Well, and, and I think there's so much more value there too. Like the only times I've honestly gotten autographs for the most part is because I met the person. So for me, it's like a memento of that time I met them, which is super right. special. It is. Um, it is very special to meet yeah. your hero and have that autograph. So in person is the gold standard. There is another approach though that I I use all the time. It's called through the mail. Through the mail means that <laughs> you. Mail have you know gotten their address gotten their permission to send stuff you send stuff to them they sign it they send it back to you yep. um that is you know that is in an important arsenal a tool in your arsenal when you're talking about autograph collecting because you know if you're thinking about you know motown artists or artists that you know had hits in the 50s and 60s some of these guys are still alive and they're not touring anymore they're, they're very elderly accessible. at this point but it means a lot to them when you reach out to them and say, you know, I, I care about this music you made. I'm a younger person. I would love to have your autograph. You, I can't tell you how many times those guys have been so gracious to me and so happy and will write long handwritten letters telling me how yeah. much they appreciate this. That is gold to me. Um, so, you and know, I would say sometimes that that's probably more meaningful than the in-person. A lot of times with the in-person, there's probably 20 people waiting with you. Yeah. And most you get is a little scribble, maybe a handshake and two words. But at least in that case, you're going to hold letter back, which is really yeah. cool. And, 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 and through the mail, right, they have the time. And and so yeah. I would always invite them to write inscriptions on the album. You know, tell me your memories of making this record. And someone will write a whole paragraph about you know what what was going on in their life at that time. And it's just it's really special. And and you know, part of that rush to me, it isn't just that I'm going to get to go home with this souvenir. It's that I gave them that moment. You know, especially sure. when you think about. Um, like, let me show you some examples. I, I brought some things with me today. Yeah, to, we should just show some stuff. All share with you. So, like, um, you're you're too young to remember, but I am a I am a huge fan of the group, the Drifters. The Drifters okay. had a lot of hits in the '50s and '60s. Under the Boardwalk, Down by the Sea. You know, that was the Drifters. And so, when I started seeking out, you know, the Drifters, a lot of them were already dead, but some of them were still alive. And so, I got. You know, Charlie Thomas from the Drifters signed this record. Bobby Hendricks signed this. They're both dead now, but they signed this for me and they shared their stories with me. And sometimes, you know, like with the with the older ones through the mail, they will they will, um, you know, talk to you on the phone, tell you stories. You know, some of these guys have nothing but time. And so sure. if you are if you are at all a fan of music, let's say 50s, 60s, 70s. There's a lot of these guys that are very elderly now that are that'll just love it if you reach out to them and want mm -hmm. their autograph, but also want to hear their stories and talk to them. And that's very special to me. Um, so I've, I've got a, a fun one here to share with you on the Drifters topic. So 
um, Butch Leak. So of all the drifters who are on any of the albums, there are only two that are left, Rick Shepard and Butch Leak. That's it. Um, Joe Blunt recently died and Charlie Thomas died a few years ago. So there, there are literally only two of them left. And they went through like, I don't know, 25 different members back in the day. And only two of them are left. And so Butch, who has gotten to be a good friend of mine, he's still living in New York. He's very elderly, but he's doing well. And I was in New York for a work conference and I called Butch up and I said, you know, hey, let's let's go to a Mets game. The Mets were in town and, you know, he grew up in New York. And so he met me at the subway station and we went out to to Queens and sat nine innings of a Mets game talking about the drifters. And he signed all my albums and stuff. I mean, that's just, you know, they, they love that. Like when you find those old guys that are willing to, you know, share their stories and sign your stuff. That to me is like when somebody says, oh, what's this stuff worth? I say, you know, F that. Like it's this isn't about money. This is about the experiences, the connections you can make. And, you know, this is to me exhibit A of that. Like like well, nine innings at a Mets game with a with a legend of music, um, you know, because because he's got so much to share, you know. So And that's awesome because that turned your kind of going through the mail into an in person, you know. Absolutely. That's, so we so really- so yeah, so I let me get back to my point. So there was the there's yeah. the in person, there's the through the mail. You can also get autographs a lot of times. This is my number three. This is from um official sources. So a lot yeah. of times now yeah. bands will sell, you know, through talk shop or whatever. It'll be a signed record or a signed book. And that's great. Don't discount that. That may be your only way to get stuff. Like I've got yeah. um, for instance, um, this is let's see. Several things here. So this is Bill Wyman from the Rolling Stones, you know, yep. he, he signs an eight by 10 and will send it to you from his website. So, you know, bona fide Hall of Famer, you know, amazing artist, Bill Wyman, longtime bass player for the Rolling Stones. And he will sign an eight by 10 to send it to you for like 20 yeah. bucks, you know, so yeah. look on his website. So that's yeah. a, so when you, when you can do, you know, from the official source, um, I've got another one here. This is like, um, let's see. And it's becoming, I wouldn't call it common these days, but I would say, you know, a couple releases a month. I'm talking about new releases Absolutely. or reissues. Yeah. This is becoming, the, you know, inserts. It's usually yeah. limited, obviously, to a couple hundred or maybe a couple thousand on the high end. But even the big, you know, the big artists like Taylor Swift, like there's signed. I've gotten Taylor several times and she'll sign. If you order from her website, Yeah. Um, then you'll get, you know, the LP signed or whatever. She signed Midnight. She signed Folk yep. Wars. Like, she's done that. This is Ace Frehley's book. He signed on the cover, and he also signed mm-hmm. on the on the uh, title page. Very um, cool. So, you know, from Kiss. So, yeah, it's 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 definitely possible. Recently, I've gotten Graham Nash. I've gotten Mike Spock 20. I've gotten Journey. Like, there's a lot of uh, artists that will sign, you know, through through their official website or through Talk Shop Live. And there's so even, I-, I don't know the name of it, but there's a Facebook group specifically dedicated to um, new releases, books and records that are signed by the artist. So check that oh, out. Look that up. Cool. Okay. So you got in person, obviously the biggest one you get, which we're going to talk about a lot in regards yeah, to in the person, email, email, official source. And then there's a fourth source of music autographs. And I want to, I want to introduce this with extreme caution. And that is, you know, go on eBay and buy something already signed. Um, yeah. I have known people who have made this mistake. You know, they'll they'll come to my home, they'll see all the signed stuff, and they'll say, "Oh, I'm going to get on eBay and oh look, here's John Lennon's autograph, here's Elvis Presley's autograph." So much of that stuff is fake. So you know, it, it's 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 auto pen, it's reproduction, it's just you know, if you if you look at Paul McCartney's autograph and you sit for a weekend practicing it, you can do something passable, and then you can sign some stuff and put it on eBay, and somebody will pay you five hundred dollars for it. Um, so be extremely careful yep. with with you know third party autographs that are not ones you got in person or through the mail or from an official source that are from a non official source. Now where do you, where, where do you sit with the whole authentication thing? Now if it has a certificate yeah. of authentication, then it goes, and I think it's like okay, well how legitimate is the, the yeah. source so, of authentication? So because anybody can print out certificate. So Certificates of authentication. Let me let me tell you one. This just happened to me. So my father knows that I'm a big fan of Jim Reeves. Okay, 
So this past Christmas, Jim Reeves was country legend, died in a plane crash in the 60s. Um, he found a record on eBay and bought it for me on Christmas Day, sent it to me, and it was purportedly signed by Jim Reeves. Now, think about the the, the position I'm in here as his son opening yeah, his Christmas he's present. He's got to be excited. The, the, the record is definitely from the 70s. Jim Reeves was an RCA. RCA adopted that NASA-style logo in the 70s, and Jim Reeves died in the 60s. So the, the autograph mm -hmm. on this record could not be authentic because the canvas is far too wide. Yeah. yeah. And and so I was like, oh, and, and and I have to tell him, you know, and yeah. so that's an uncomfortable phone call. So, Live and learn. but but you know what? That's that's the majority of what's on eBay. So just be extremely careful. What I would trust, I would trust if it is PSA authenticated or JSA. Um, yeah. If it's not PSA or JSA, run away. What um, about Beckett? Is that a? Per, I mean, I know that Beckett from the sports card it's, world. It's I more for that. sports. Yeah, I, if it's sports cards, I would trust Beckett. But for for, gotcha. for music, really, honestly, I'm being nice to say JSA. It's really PSA. I've I'm never bought PSA. an autograph of any of any expense other than PSA. Okay. Um, because they okay. have a standard where they have multiple experts examine it independently. And unless yeah. all of them pass it, they don't pass it. So well, they, would rather, a, they would rather fail an authentic than yeah. pass a fake. And so... Um, even that definitely a pro tip for anyone watching is just if you're buying off eBay or, or yeah. anywhere, third party PSA is really what you want to be mindful PSA of. PSA is what you want to do. Especially for music. If you're if you're doing if you're doing sports, you can trust you can trust Beckett for that for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. But PSA is definitely the gold standard. I, I have only a couple of times bought an autograph like that. I for instance, I have a I have an eight by ten signed by Johnny Cash and June Carter. I never got either one of them, but it's PSA certified. That was important to me because the very first date my parents ever went on was to a Johnny and June concert. So I wanted that oh, in my cool. collection, but I waited until I could find one that's, that's PSA certified. Um, I cool. also, I have a Frank Sinatra autograph in my collection that's PSA certified. Um, Frank was dead by the time I was in high school, so I never got a chance to get him, but he's you know, one of my all time favorites. And so I wanted that in my collection. So I have that's a few right. of those that I've bought, but the vast majority of what I've got, I either got myself either in person or, or through the mail. So let's, let's dive into the in-person. Cause I think that's the lesson here for a lot of people, Absolutely. myself included about, Hey, if, if an artist is coming to town, you know, we're going to talk about the different sizes of venues that matter the timing of it is critical i really want to get down into i wanted this to be a how-to for people who are like man i'd love to try this so first and foremost if you're thinking about how to go about getting an in-person autograph what are the first things for someone who's new to this that you would tell them lessons you've learned over the years okay so the first thing i would start with is get to know your venues and you know un unfortunately if you are in an extremely rural area you're going to have very few opportunities. Um, yeah. That's just the way it is. But if you are in any city of any size, if you're in New York or Cleveland or Seattle or Toledo or San Francisco or Dallas or Houston, you're going to have plenty mm -hmm. of opportunities. So I would say get to know the venues in your area. Get on their mailing lists. You know, there are small theaters. There are large um, arenas. There's everything in between. Um, get to know your venues that have any live music events. Um, this is one of the, I would say, even even besides autographing, just if you're a music fan, get to know your venues. I can't tell you how many times this happened to me, and it's probably happened to you also, where you'll you'll post, hey, I had a great concert last night, and somebody will say, oh, I didn't know about that. Why don't I know about oh, this? You know? yeah, it yeah. happens all the time. And, so, and, and the reason you don't know about it is because you're not paying attention to the venues. Um, yeah. And so... If you will, you know, I would say for autograph collecting once a month at the first of the month, look at each, you know, bookmark all the venues in your area. I'm, I'm talking little small 300 seat theaters all the way yeah, up yeah. to sports arenas. Bookmark them all. And, you know, GI and I are both in the Dallas area, but everything I'm going to say applies to any sure. area. Any um, major bookmark market. all those venues and then check them and make yourself a spreadsheet and say, you know, this group is going to be at, at this venue and this solo artist is going to be at this venue. Make a, make a comprehensive list. And then any of those days you are available, you know, that's, that's a chance you can autograph. And now here's the thing. Uh, th they probably don't want me to say this out loud, but I'm going to say it out loud. 
Who's they? You, we're, we're good here. You don't actually have to go to the concert. You know, you, you, okay. you, you can you can go get the autograph at soundcheck time and then leave and not go. Well, to- well that's that's some of the biggest learnings here is that the timing is everything. Yes. Going to the concert is one thing that has, yes. honestly has nothing to do. With but if, if, but if, it's an act, if it's an act you've seen two times or if there's only one person in the band you're actually interested in, you know, you don't actually have to go to the concert. Like there's there's a lot of people that will rag on you for that. You know, oh, you're getting an autograph. You don't even go to the show. But but we all do it. We all do it. What, uh, so what's the best size of venue, though? Like that's what's the sweet so, spot that you found? Yeah. The, the, I mean, I, like you I, can I, show I, up at a stadium before, and I mean, you're not going to get within – hundreds of yards of where an artist may actually be seen because they're underground they're pulling in in buses but like yeah mid-size venue small to mid-size has got to be so so it 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 really depends it's not so much about the size of the venue it's it's where the back door is accessibility if the if the the, it's all about accessibility right so if the if if you will you will find your favorite venues for graphing in your area where the back door is accessible and yeah. there's no there's no way to learn this but to go and do it. Go yeah. go out. check out the venue on a show day. It doesn't even have to be a show you care about. Just go watch. Go park in the parking lot yeah. and walk around the, the the entire building. See where the stage door is. See where the buses pull in. Yeah. You know, get there at noon before any of them are getting there, and mm-hmm. and and really figure out the lay of the land, and then, you know, some venues there is one door they always go in. And and that is just gold standard if you can get to that. If that one door is on a public sidewalk, then then you're right. gold. Um, what I have found again and again and again is that knowledge of the venue and being prepared and being ready to go, um, that's that's it. Um, but also, I would say, don't don't think about autograph collecting as. I have this wish list of these five artists. You're going to be disappointed. Instead, think of it as let me get whoever's around. Let me focus on what's available. You know, like if if this is the group that's coming, I mean, you're probably not going to still do something that you have no interest in. Like, you know, I have I have no interest in opera. I have no interest in death metal. You know, I'm probably not going to go to those. But but if it's something that's even within your orbit, um, mm-hmm. check it out. Go go there and and be ready to have some stuff signed. And you will find again and again and again, these artists are happy to do it. You just, they're not making themselves available on purpose in most cases, but Mm -hmm. if you can be in the right spot at the right time, they will sign for you every time. And so, so accessibility obviously is huge based on the size of the venue. The smaller the venue is going to be more accessible in most cases. And then you're hitting on timing and I can't stress timing enough as someone who's performed and been on stage and been on tour. What a lot of people don't understand what you need to understand is when sound check happens because that's the most accessible time very early in the day it is far better to be three hours early than a minute late because if you're a minute late you missed it well Um, don't don't show up when doors open and think you're going to get an autograph you got to show up like you said after lunch early afternoon because most sound checks for headliners they're going to happen three or four o'clock maybe if it's a 7 30 show which is typical they're going to sound check at three or four you yep. need you need to be there at one so you can yep. watch everybody coming in and out. And there and there are there are so many ways to do this. There's not one way to do this. Um, and so let me sort of paint a picture of the easiest to the hardest. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the easiest, there are still a lot of artists who will literally come to the lobby after the show and sign everything. Like that is the easiest. The easiest yeah. is the after show lobby signers. And there are yeah, some at the merch booth. booth. That you is, know, that is yeah, at the merch table. That is very, very common in the case of classic country artists. If you if mm-hmm. you are seeking out any of the classic country artists, they they almost always do that. All well, of again, the- we're talking about mid small to mid-sized menus. Yeah. Clubs, yeah. Small yep. theaters, those yep. types of things. You once you get into arena world, like this, all changes. No, but I mean, like even literally Hall of Famers, though. I mean, like Wanda Wanda Jackson, Hall of Famer, classic country artist. She will still sign after every show, and she's very elderly. Um, and and so that don't don't ignore that option. That is still yeah. a great way to get autographs. And 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 you know other Hall of Famers like Dave Mason from from Traffic. You know, mm-hmm. an absolute Hall of Famer. He still signs in the lobby after every show. Um, so, so you either got to show up early to do the uh, sound check meet and greet, or I'm sorry, sound check graphing 
before or after sound check, catching them in and out, or you have to stay late and hope they stay, you know, show up at the merch booth. Yeah. But then you also have to anticipate how many other people at the show are thinking, oh, I'll hang out late because they're already there, you know? Yeah, so, so, so I'm, I'm saying that the, the easiest are the ones who will assign in the lobby that then there's no, there's no challenge at all. Um, sometimes, and then, and then sort of like, if that's the, if that's the easiest, the next easiest is some of them will have a paid meet and greet and you can sure. decide if it's worth it. You know, like a, there's, there's a handful of artists I've paid for the meet and greet knowing they would sign everything. Um, yeah. So that's, an, you know, another option. Now, now I will say, be careful with that, though, because there are definitely paid meet and greets where they yeah, won't allow you to bring anything. Yeah. And absolutely. sometimes they'll have a pre-signed thing that you get with the yeah. 500 bucks or whatever you pay, yeah. you know, and and I, I, I have done this only once where I did a paid meet and greet um, and they specifically said no items. You can't. Yeah. And bring anything. But we'll um, give you this poster that signed. Yeah. Yeah. You got a signed poster, which was great, signed by the whole band. But me and my buddy at the time, we were like, you know what? Let's try it anyways. And so what we did is we brought our records and we waited till the, yep. till the whole line had gone through. We were the yep. last ones in line. Yep. So we were like, no, we're not holding anybody up behind us. We're the, we waited the long, we waited yep. longer than everybody. And the security guy at that time was like, uh, you can try it because he didn't care. And then we went up to the band and the band was the same thing. There were no other fans waiting behind us. And so they were like, yeah, sure. You know, because it didn't matter. It's, it's more of a. I have no, many, many times the, 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 the artists themselves are just fine with it. It's, yeah. the, it's the handlers and the venue staff that are prickly about it. It's and time. So, yeah. They, they can't let, they can't say everyone bring whatever you want. Cause then they'll be there for four hours. You know? Yeah. Same thing. I I I had uh, a paid meet and greet with with Sean Lennon and Les Claypool, you know, from Primus, and they and he That's wouldn't. Cool. They they were. It was one of those. We won't sign anything, but here's your signed stuff. Yeah, then, then Sean and Les were both signing stuff in the in the parking lot. <laughs> you know, this was the uh, um, this was the one I was referencing. So I went. We went and saw the Black Crows in Austin. Yeah, and I got um. So we got the signed poster, and then. People will probably balk at this, but I got the actual record signed. Nice. All the whole band. I have very few, but the, again, that was a paid meet and greet. I haven't yeah, done yeah. that often, being married, but that was an example of like semi breaking the rules to to get to accomplish the uh, having more than just the poster, you know, because I wanted a record signed. So. Sure. Um, okay, so, so so what do you do if there's not if there's not a, a lobby signing or a paid meet and greet? Okay, yeah. you have to make your own. You have to make your own opportunity. And and the first one we've already alluded to, which is sound check time. Sound check time is probably the very best if you can get to the venue and get to where the the stage door is and the buses are yeah. at say two, three, four o'clock in the afternoon when they're going in for stage um, for sound, sound check. Yeah. That's the gold standard. That's that, just. And just so people know, most musicians, again, we're talking about club theater level, sound check, middle of the afternoon, most musicians will actually spend, I don't know, 15, 30 minutes on stage, but they're there all day. The bus arrives at like 11 a.m. and the show's not till seven. So they've got hours to kill. Right. They're only going on stage to check their equipment for just a few minutes. And then the techs are doing a lot of that work, even on a club level. You know, they're still they still got roadies. And so there's a lot of time for a musician to just be bumming around. And that's when you want to get them when they're not busy. Well, and it's even, it's even better when you're there early. A lot of times you can catch them one at a time. And so so it, chasing a solo artist is different from chasing a band. If, if you're chasing a band. Your nightmare is when the car pulls up and they all five get out of the car at the same time because it's very hard to catch them all five at that <laughs> moment. It is far better when they trickle in, when one of them yeah. comes and then another one comes. And so I've got, for instance, I got the band Quiet Riot. I'm, you know, because I'm old and and Quiet Riot was was big for me in the '80s. And so I got them at a small venue, you know, because here's the thing, you know, these groups are are unknown and then they're having their peak of success and then they're back to being, you know. Yeah you can catch them on the down slide. And so yeah. I got Rudy Sarzo and Alex Grossi and, 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 uh, and Johnny and Jizzy. And I got them all on a, on a drum head and a bunch of albums as well. And when I was there, I got there at noon, knowing nobody would be there at noon. There was even the, the, the local sound guys weren't there yet. And yeah. I was like, I'm going to catch them as they're coming in. And so Johnny arrived and he signed for me. And then, and then Jizzy arrived and then Alex and Rudy arrived together. 
And so I, I was able to get them all because I was in the right place at the right time. And so, so the drum head, I think, is really cool. And that's kind of where, where I wanted to go next and talk about the canvas, about yeah. why you choose what you choose and do certain artists like certain signing LPs versus drum heads versus photos. Like what's your experience been there? Okay, so there's a lot of different canvases you can use. And when I say canvas, I mean, what are you going to get signed, right? Yep. And so for me, because I'm a record collector, my my gold standard canvas is an LP, right? Like yep. if I can get an LP signed, that's my standard. But the 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 problem with an LP, if it's if it's a solo artist, that's great because they can yep. sign it. But if it's a if it's a group, I don't ever, ever, ever want somebody to sign something they're not on. And a lot of these groups, as we know, they change members over time. Yeah. And yeah. so you need to do your whole work and you need to find out who is on the album. And I have literally had in my bag, you know, for some of these, some of these, you know, backstage moments, I'll have 10 albums, but I'll have little post-it notes, my cheat sheet of who's on which album. So wow. Steve's on these and Dave's on these and Ron's on these. And when Ron pulls up, I'm yanking those three that have his, like, you got to be ready. you got to be in that moment because sometimes you have a second to say, hey, Ron, can you come sign? And they'll come over, but you better be damn sure you're quick ready with which ones he's actually on. Because so, you're well, so back to my one example, because I don't yeah. have that many, but uh, Black Crows, they've changed members quite a bit. And yeah. when we did the paid meet and greet, you know, they're on the line. You go through, you shake each other's hand, you take a picture, you get it to sign. And they were specifically, I think, you know, Chris and Rich are on here and there and maybe one or two other members who played on a more but there's definitely one or two who didn't, but we were in the line. And so like they were just passing it. So the band, you know, the first band member took yeah. it, like I think Rich signed it first and he just passed it down the line. And I wasn't gonna like, oh no, you're not on that. I wasn't yeah, gonna that's, take it out of me before too, and I don't like that. Yeah. Like if I, I just let it happen. It, but here, so here's what I always do. I always am ready with the and, and, and post-it notes is a good idea. Put the post-it notes of who's actually on that record. Because in, in some groups, I mean, if you think about groups from the 70s and 80s, sometimes the, the members have come and they've gone and they come again, oh, and they've yeah. gone again. And you'll have an album that this one has two of them, this one has three of them, this one has one of them, this one has two of them, but it's different. Yeah. You just be ready. And if you'll put those post-it notes on there at the top with the names, they'll sign. And if you just say, hey, only sign the ones you're on, but I always, if I'm going to do that, I always have a canvas that's for everybody. So, you know, the old flowers or Jacob Dylan, um, you know, one headlight like they. So this is a band that has had a lot of turnover. So when yeah. I saw the wildflowers and I was going to get their autograph, I wanted Jacob on the original LPs and a couple of the others that were on different ones. But mm -hmm. I wanted something for the entire current band. Sure. Yeah. So the nice thing about a drum head is that it's cheap. And it's wow. a good souvenir to get all the autographs on. And then okay. you can just do the albums for the people who are actually on. Them. And that so, way you don't feel like you're being rude, too, when exactly. you're like, oh, no, I don't need your autograph. I always want to celebrate all the members. Like, I don't, yeah. want to just, I don't want to just celebrate the originals and say, you know, yeah. slot off to the, to the replacements. But I want to have something that they can sign, but also something that the, the originals can sign on the LP. And so... You know, when you talk about canvas, you know, a, a, a guitar is a great canvas, but it's expensive. I've got about 50 guitars, but, it, you know, for, for me, for an artist to be guitar worthy, it has to be really one of my favorites because they yeah. take a lot of space and they're expensive. A lot of space. Drum heads are cheap. You can fill a wall with drum heads and, mm -hmm. and that's a nice canvas. Another nice canvas is the sheet music. If you will print a sheet music of the, you know, one of the big hits, well, that's all cool. of the members have been playing that hit. So that's a, you know, that's a nice one that they can all sign. Um, and I've used sheet music before as a, as an everybody canvas. Yeah. Obviously yep. you can also just do, you know, you can do an eight by 10. Um, that's another nice canvas is that if you'll go on Google uh, image search and search for high res and then find yep. the images that are, you know, the high res ones, you can find a picture of the current band or yep. the original band, whichever one you want. and mm you know, send it to Walgreens or CVS and, and print it. Um, my understanding of the copyright law is that's fair use if you're not selling it. Now, if you're going to be one of these guys that's going to turn around and sell it on eBay, you may very well get a, a cease and desist from the photographer owner. Sure. But if sure. you're just doing it for your own purpose, I think that's fine. Um, now, so have you, since have I, you, I recently have got... Have ever had anyone who just turned you down and said, no, I don't want to sign that because of the canvas itself? 
Uh, must not if it's nothing that you no, know, no, it has happened. I'll, t- I'll give you a couple examples. So, um, <laughs> Don McLean, I, you know, Don McLean wrote American Pie, um, Bye Bye Miss American Pie, one of the great, great songs. He was, he was playing a show at a little theater, and I showed up with some of his albums, but I also printed some eight by tens of him. And mm-hmm. I had the eight by tens from when he was young and beautiful, and he signed them. But I had an eight by ten of him as he looks today, as a very elderly man, and he wouldn't sign it. Like he was like, I don't like that picture. So, so that was one. Um, he didn't there like was, the there was another one, and some of your some of your viewers might know the the band Sticks. So in in the band Sticks, um, they they they've had two famous piano players. The original guy was Dennis DeYoung, and then he later got replaced by Lawrence Gowan. And okay. so. I had a drum head, I do have a drum head, where I was trying to get all the Sticks members on it. And Dennis was one of the last ones that I needed. But I knew there might be some bl- bad blood between Dennis and Lawrence because Lawrence replaced Dennis. And, and I knew that they weren't necessarily their, his, his favorite person. And so I, I took the, it was a big bass drum head that all the other members of Sticks through the years had signed. And I wanted Dennis on it. So I put it in a box for a drum head and I cut out just the corner and I, and I taped it in. So the corner that was showing was blank. And so it was like, Dennis, we saw my drum head. I just cut this corner out so you could sign it, but he couldn't see any of the other autographs and he did sign it and then, and then gave it to me. And so then I took the box off and I've got all of them. So I've got Dennis and Lawrence on the same drum head, which probably nobody has. So I think, I think it's very interesting. Um, I know for myself personally, and probably a lot of people who've never necessarily seeked out autographs, like my gut would be just to try and get, you know, obviously the lead singer or, you know, the, the, the lead guitar player or whoever's your favorite, you know, if you can get them all great, but, yeah. but you go deep and will get not only the musicians who are playing on it and who have played it, but writers and producers. And that's amazing to me because yeah. I would never think to like be, get the producer on an album to sign it. Well, you know? so, so let me share a few of those. So yeah. like, like people, people love the Beatles, right? And, and you know, you, you love John Paul, George and Ringo, but you're probably never going to get their autograph. Okay. But no. um, what I have done, because I, as you mentioned, I specifically collect Capitol Records. I have sought out any of the Apple records. Apple was the Beatles record label. Any of the Apple records where I can get, one of the people that played on it, yeah. maybe not the Beatles themselves, but I get somebody I else. For instance, George Harrison, All Things Must Pass. Everyone knows this album. Dave Mason from Traffic played on this album. And Dave yeah. Mason still plays little venues today. And so you can get Dave Mason on your All Things Must Pass, and he's one of the guitar players on this record. Now, it's I bet like, he really thought that was cool, too. Am I wrong? Because cool nobody ever asked him for that. So here's That's another one. So Wings Wildlife. This is one of Paul McCartney's first albums. Denny Lane, who just recently passed away, mm-hmm. he signed a big stack for me. Denny Lane was one one fourth of Wings for most yep. of the history of Wings, and he was very gracious to sign. You know, so there again, there's another one you can get. Um, I think, and I think there's a tip in here. As you, as you, I don't want to stop you, but I think, and tell me if I'm wrong, but finding something interesting, like yes. conversational, yes, it's got to be way cooler. Because how many times it. has uh, Dave Mason? signed his solo records or his traffic records. Yeah, all the time. But yeah, but, but you show him off his past and he's probably like, oh, I haven't thought about that in years. And he's gonna, you know, he'll reminisce so, with so let me let me give you a big tip. This is something you can you can all take home with you. Discogs. Discogs is an amazing resource and it and, and not in the way that you think. I'm about to tell you something you've never looked at. So everybody thinks of Discogs as the way to get which albums each artist released and to log your own collection. That's that's wonderful. But there is a feature that you may not know about on Discogs. You can pull up any individual, not a band, but an individual, click mm-hmm. on their page. It'll show you the, the records that they've done. So, like, for instance, if you if you pull up the band Genesis and you click on Steve Hackett, it'll tell you Steve Hackett's solo albums. But there's yeah. another button you can click, and it says credits. Click yeah. on the credits button, and it'll show you everything that that person has played on. And, and I promise you, so many of these people that you think of your, as your musical heroes and that are coming to your town to do a concert, they have played on so many other things besides their own album. That's how I learned that Dave Mason played on all things that must pass. That's go, how yeah. I learned that 
the one I'm about to tell you about. So all all of that 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 credits button is such a valuable resource, and That's you'll cool. find like like for instance. The band, the box tops. The box tops had a lot of hits in the late sixties. Um, their biggest number one was um, the letter. Give me a ticket for an airplane. I got time to take a fast train. Long days are gone. I'm going home. My baby wrote me a letter. Right. The box tops. Well, so their drummer is Ron Krasinski. Ron Krasinski also played on all the Seals and Crofts albums. Well, when the box tops were here, and I came up to him with a stack of Seals and Crofts to sign, and Barry Manilow albums that he played on. He was the drummer to sign. He was amazed, and he said, yeah. "No one has ever asked me to sign these records." And I'm like, "Oh, that's oh, great!" I did my homework, and so now he and I are actually friends because that that moment of me standing there, you know, with Seals and Crofts record, which he didn't expect anyone would remember he played on. This have you gone, guy, to, a, have you gone to a baseball game with him yet? What's that? Have you gone to a baseball game with him yet? No, not a baseball <laughs> game. I only did that with Butch from the Drifters, but 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 I would. Um, so let me tell you one more Apple story. So. Yeah. Uh, John and Yoko released an album sometime in New York City. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very uneven album. It has some great stuff and some garbage, but that, that's not the point of this. Um, <laughs> Mark Volman. Mark Volman was with the Turtles and then with Frank Zappa's Mothers of Invention. Mm -hmm. One of the sides of this double album is a jam session with the Mothers. And this is my favorite story because when I got to meet Mark Volman at a Turtles concert, I brought this album out and I said, you know, this is funny. And he said, you know, what's really funny is that we never got paid for that. We did this jam session, not knowing it was being recorded. And then it comes out as this album that sells a million copies. And we didn't get paid a red dime. And I said, well, Great. write that on there. And he literally put a hand, he drew a hand, me giving the middle finger for not getting paid for this record. Now, that, that to me is like so special to have that in my collection. Mark Volman well, giving a middle finger to John and Yoko for not paying him for the record. So that's like, great. That's, that's perfect. Well, and I think that's the that's the the big picture here is it's cool to me to have an autograph, but if if you ask me, hey, you had a choice, you could either have a five minute conversation with musician X Y Z, whoever it is, or you can have their autograph, like. I would probably be the conversation guy just because I'd love to get a few yeah. questions answered, you know, That's or fine. just and you you can have both. I mean, I've I've had plenty of oh, both. Yeah, in a perfect world. Yeah, you get both. Um, you can have both, but but the um but yeah, I mean it's 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 a hobby. If you if you don't enjoy it, then don't. Um I always it's always funny to me that the 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 handlers will sometimes let the person stand there and and talk on and on and on. And then mm -hmm. as soon as I bring out the autograph, they're like, move on, move on. And I'm like, that guy just got 10 minutes. I, I, yeah. I can be quick. I'm like, bam, 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 sign them. You know, like I can, I can get done in 30 seconds because you know, what's funny is there's always this, the person back there that's like, I saw you in 1976 at the Kansas state fair. And don't you remember? And it was raining and y'all went on anyway. And the guy's like, no, I don't remember. Yeah, you know, like, that, that lady will talk for, for five minutes. But then as soon as I pull out the Sharpie, they're like, no, no time. And I'm like, okay, I don't need much. Um, yeah, it's, well, it's I think I think the I mean me knowing you and I know how much uh how much the way you think as like an archivist. Yeah. And I think that's that's what's so fascinating to me about this because I, I I believe and I know to be fact when most people think about autographs, they immediately think of well, how much is it worth? How much is this yeah. person's autograph worth? How rare is this autograph? And for you, it's not about that at all. Like you said at the not beginning, this is about this is about creating a moment with a musician that you respect. That and, 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 and honestly, GI, some of those moments have turned into lifelong friendships. Yeah, that's um, so cool. Like this, this started for me. You know, I collect capital. And one of the best-selling capital artists was The Letterman. And when I was, you know, in my 20s, in the 90s, um, I got to meet Tony Butala from The Letterman. And he sat sat with me after a concert, and we were talking till 3 in the morning. And it was it was really... Tony showing me that you could do that. If you show you care, there you know, you and that you're a reasonable person, um, you can, you can have these friendships. And and to me, yeah. all of these autographs are a memento of that moment. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a way to, to connect with that. I, I'm not a musician myself, but it's a way to connect with the musicians and the ones yeah. that you love. And, and so much of it, you know, you, you have that you and I co-admin a, a now spinning group. And, yep. and the first rule on that group is don't be an ass, right? 
that's the rule on autographing. Like I, I would yeah. say to anyone who would autograph, the first thing that you need to remember is these people don't owe you anything. They don't owe you anything. You, if you buy a concert ticket, you have a right to go to the concert. If you buy a record, you have a right to sit home and listen to that record. They do not owe you a, a, a moment to sign your stuff and talk to you. If, mm -hmm. if they're going to give you that, they're giving you that because they want to give you that, not because they owe you that. And so if you think of it as they don't owe me anything, but you can always ask nicely. And sometimes they're going to tell you no. You know what? Harry Connick Jr. told me no. I'm not willing to sign. Okay. You know, that's that's your prerogative. Um, yeah. But you know what? The good news is most of them don't. If you're in the right place at the right time, most of them are not going to tell you no. They're going to sign your stuff. And, and so so I, I one question on that in regards to telling you no. When you're, again, as a general, when you think, generally when you do this at, again, small, medium-sized venues where you have success out of it, how many of the people there waiting right next to you are flippers that are just trying to get this yeah. stuff to up online? So, is that like a huge uh, inconvenience for you and the artist? Or is it like, what does that look like these days? So let's talk about that. So first of all, um, you know, and, and, and I am mostly going for 60s, 70s, 80s artists. I'm not going yeah. for current artists because my yeah, I would big awesome. money anyways, you know, um, but terrible. I have found it's funny that most of the people today, if they want anything, they want a selfie. They don't want an autograph. There's not that many autographers anymore. Um, I think that 20 years ago, there would have been more people looking for an autograph. People want a selfie now, like it's that Instagram generation. And so I don't, I don't care about that. Like sometimes I'll yeah. get a photo with the artist if, if, if I have the opportunity, but that's never my priority. My priority is the autograph. And so, um, it, yeah, I mean like, so some of the people there don't, don't have anything to get signed. I mean, like yeah. it's, it's weird to me, like even at the, what, what we said is the easiest of all where the artists come to the lobby after the show. Yeah. 90% of the people, 95% of the people have nothing they brought with them to get signed. It's just, they want a picture with the artist, you know? Sure. I just want to say so, thank you. Which is so cool. autographing itself as a hobby is probably in decline. Um, but in terms of the ones who are there, I have had, okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to answer your question in two different ways. I don't personally have a moral problem with, with selling the autograph. I think that if you, if you can get an autograph and sell it, you're selling it to somebody who wishes they could have been there, but weren't right. In most uh, cases. And, yeah. And so I don't have a moral problem with, with people who sell autographs, but I personally don't sell autographs because I want to be able to tell the auto artist, I never sell an autograph. In fact, I wear a lanyard. I didn't bring it with me tonight, but I, I wear a lanyard that says, I have never sold an autograph ever. Thank you. And it, it's on both sides. So no matter how the wind blows it, they're going to see it. Um, and that is true. I, I have to this that. day, I have, and I've been collecting for over 40 years. I have never, ever sold an autograph. But I don't have a moral problem with it, but I want to be the guy that can say I've never sold one. Um, sure. Some sure. of the artists have a problem with it. Now, um, the ones who have a problem with artists selling, the only times to answer it from the other side, I've had them mention it. So there's a couple of reactions to that. Sometimes the ones who are worried about you selling it, they want to put your name on it. I was just going to ask, yeah. As, as a collector, I don't ever want my name on it. I want you to just yeah. sign your name and that's it. Um, but because it's not about me, I had nothing to do with this record. My name doesn't belong on this record. But mm -hmm. some of them insist the only way they're going to sign it is to say two Makes Rex sense. or two GI. Okay, fine. I'll let that quote unquote devalues it because yeah. if I'm going on eBay to buy a, a but, an auto, if I don't want it to say two Susie, and you know, what yeah. does that mean? You know, but, so but, it makes sense. But let me tell you why. So to me, it's not about the value. I'm not selling autographs to well, you, me yeah, about yeah. the collectible. Um, if, if I can enhance a collectible with the artist autograph, I want to do that. If I, if they put my name on it, it de it 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 it's it's the opposite of enhancing. It's a, it's a, it's de, uh, you know um, it's a it's a black mark on that. So yeah. and, and I'm not thinking about selling this. I'm thinking about 300 years from now when we're, we're all gone. I want this to be in somebody else's collection. Well, yeah. I, I told you earlier. I bought a Frank Sinatra autograph. My Frank Sinatra autograph says to Vicky, "Love Frank Sinatra." 
mm-hmm. and I'm sure Vicky was just some kid in an autograph line, but I don't want to be Vicky. I don't want my name on that because yeah, it, yeah. Vicky has nothing to do with that record, and I have nothing to do with this record. But that being said, if the artists insist, and the only yeah. way they will sign is to put my name on it, I will let I will say my name is Rex and put it on there. Um, that that is maybe maybe two percent of the time. It doesn't happen that much. The well, other, again, the I other think thing, a lot of that has to do with the level we're talking about. Because you know, if you're waiting for autographs of huge stars, which first of all you can't even get to, you know, and then their 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 autographs sell for many hundreds or thousands of dollars. That's a whole different thing than like working musicians who are yeah. playing clubs and theaters. That's it's a totally different thing. So it still comes up sometimes. Um, yeah. It, it, funny thing was when I. So I met, you know, I collect capital. So I met um, Wayne Newton, you know, Wayne Newton, Duncan Shane, and he had all those hits in the, in the sixties. So Wayne Newton, his wife was worried that I was selling stuff. Cause I had a whole stack of it. And, and oh, well, I um, could see that. Yeah. If you have a stack, they're probably and, and she was like, I, I think Wayne would have signed it all, but she was like, no, he's selling stuff. And I said, I said, I promise you, I've never sold anything. And, it, and, and it was, and so he, he only signed one for me and put my name on it. Okay, fine. That's fine. Um, so I came home with that record. That's the night that I made up my lanyard. I've never <laughs> sold an autograph. It was it was because of Wayne Newton's wife. Courtesy of Wayne Newton, you have yeah. that lemon. So I want to so, so I want to tell your listeners though something about if you if you think you might enjoy this hobby, prioritize what's available, right? Like so so think about not here's my top five wish list, but think mm-hmm. about, look at the, look at all the artists that are coming to all the theaters this month and see who I might get. You know, yeah. it's, 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 it's more fun when you're winning and it's easier to win when you don't go in with a preconceived notion of who you're going to get. And if you do well, that, then you'll get some experience with it. You'll, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see how the venues the and the budget. security works and all that stuff. You so, know? so think about this too. If you, if you will use that trick on Discogs and you will find the credits and you will do this, the research on the internet of who is in that band now, mm-hmm. a lot of times for even those people you think of this, as the replacements, they played on other stuff. You may find they played on some album you cared about yeah. and, and you're going to, you're going to get that autograph and it's going to be fun. Um, I want to show you. Oh, let me just show you several things. I mentioned Quiet Riot earlier. So this is an example. I got I got Rudy Sarzo in person, and I got Chuck Wright through the mail. So I've got two of them that played on Condition Critical. So you mailed the LP after you already had it signed. Yeah, so I always okay. take the record out and just mail the cover. Sure. Um, we haven't talked a lot about through the mail, but the way I do through the mail is I always reach out first. A lot of these artists have a website or a Facebook or an Instagram. Reach out first. Say, is it okay? I'll pay postage both ways. Um, I usually will put, you know, three, four, five things in the box, maybe some album covers, maybe an eight by 10, uh, maybe a drum head. And I'll also put in like, say $20, you know, which is probably more than the postage is going to take to return it. Um, like you put cash in, I put cash and Sharpies in the box. I make it super easy for them because I asked to. them to return it. So in my, in my ask, I always say I'll pay postage both ways. I always write a letter telling me, you know, a big fan. Here's, here's all the things. Um, and then please sign it. I put the cash in the box. I put the Sharpies in the box. And now how long does it take? Do you get stuff back in like weeks oh, or sometimes months it could, later? It could be a week. It could be two months. It just depends on how busy they are, whatever. Um, this is particularly helpful. Like, so when I got Cry at Riot, I got Rudy in person because he's still touring with the group. Chuck has retired from touring, but he's still happy to sign. So, you know, there, there's and, and the same thing with this one. So um, this one has Alex and Chuck. Alex is still in the group. He's happy to sign. Chuck is not. Well, well and again, I think the, a big elephant in the room here is your knowledge, Rex. Like, you know, like you've done the research. Yeah. And that's why I think a lot of people will. Information a lot of people fall. is available it, to everyone. It's and, the, not that it's not available, but there's not a lot of people who actually want to dig for it like you, even a couple of clicks deep and then align it with the schedule. And so I think that's the biggest thing is um, people understanding that, yeah, this stuff's possible. But you got to do a little bit of work. You, you got to be aware. So, you got to be smart. You have to be courteous. Study the venues to know who's yeah. going to be there. And then as soon as you know who's going to be there, you've got to study every name that's on that stage and find out what they like. Like for instance, let me let me give you a couple examples. 
um, Elvis is dead. Uh, news, news flash. I know you know that. But I news. love Elvis, and everybody wants Elvis's autograph. I don't have Elvis's autograph. You're never going to get it. He's dead. But there are a lot of people who either played with Elvis or wrote songs for Elvis who are still alive. If you want to get yeah. your Elvis album signed, every single Elvis album, you can still get signed by somebody on that record. And that's a fun game to play. So, for instance, Where No Man Stands Alone, signed by Dennis Wade, who played Hammond Organ on that record. I found him touring with Dilbert McClinton. He, Dennis Wage, who played Hammond Organ on this Elvis record, was touring with Dilbert McClinton. And, mm -hmm. and when I pulled this out, his face lit up. I mean, he's oh, a beautiful guy. But he was like, you remember, that's so cool. And he signed my album. Same thing here. Steve Terrell, who wrote It's Only Love, the songwriter on this Elvis album, and he signed it. And he was super glad to see it. And I've got okay. another dozen or so Elvis albums signed by at least one of the song members or band members or songwriters or band members. Like if you find them and if yeah. you've done the research and, and I'm telling you, Discogs credits, credits, yeah. that's the way to find them. And that's don't, cool. don't say to yourself, who can I find? Ask yourself who's available and then go find what they're on. Yeah. Um, and that, it, that honestly was part of the, I, when I think back to when we've had these initial discussions, when, um, when I was over your place and you were showing me a lot of this stuff, I was amazed that you weren't just getting the top, you know, players on the record. Like again, going levels deep to get the, the other, the songwriters, the producers, the uh, studio musicians, all those people that I think is something that a lot of people don't even consider. Or even like, I mean, we, we talk about the drifters, the drifters had huge hits with, you know, save the last dance for me and, and under the boardwalk and on Broadway. And there goes my baby. Everybody knows the songs. Nobody ever knew their names. The drifters weren't like John Paul, George and Ringo. Yeah. And so when I reached out to Charlie Thomas and Bobby Hendricks, both of whom are dead now. And I said, I would love to have you sign a stack of my records. I'd love to talk to you on the phone and hear your stories. They are delighted. They are delighted yeah. to do that. And that means that's so fantastic. much to them that somebody cares and remembers you know, and, and to me, that's a treasure. And somebody says, yeah. what's that worth? That's worth everything to me. It's worth it's worth having the fact that I sat with both these guys and heard their stories. You know, and, and it's amazing. Um, here's another fun one. This is this is a record that gets a lot of grief and record co collecting communities like there's, you know, everybody. Sure. Got it. The, the first thing I would say about Herb Alpert's Whip Cream and Other Lights is it's actually a really good record. Try listening yeah. to it, it yes. and, and uh, don't make it a joke. And it's fun. But. I was waiting behind the theater when Herb Alpert was playing. Herb Alpert, it well into his 80s, was playing a show. I got there at Soundcheck. I'm not exaggerating. He signed 20 albums for me, 20, including several copies of Whipped Cream. And so, um, you know, sometimes when you remember the old guys, they are so happy to, to share with see, you. I can uh, see that. So I got, I got one more for you on the, on the canvas topic. All right, show us one more then. So, Tommy Two Tone, eight six seven five three zero nine. Jenny, Jenny, you know the song. Everybody yep. my age knows the number eight six seven five three zero nine. So he was he was actually signing at an event, and I thought, what would be the perfect canvas? Well, that song talks about I saw your number on the bathroom wall, right? That's the that's the premise of that song. So I bought a piece of bathroom wall. This is literally actual bathroom wall. And, he, and and I handed it to him, and he knew exactly what I wanted. He wrote, oh. for a good time, call Jenny, 8675309, Tommy Tutone, and sign it. So, so, you know, get yeah. creative. Be, with, be creative. Yeah, they will appreciate that. I I completely can see that. That's really, really cool. Well, I think the, the key word I think you said earlier, just a moment ago, that I think wraps all this up, Rex, is treasure. Like, I think that's what you've got. You've got, you said 3,000 autographs. Like, that's Absolutely. legit treasure archiving the musicians who slaved over this music. And I think that's really cool to uh, to pay tribute to them and, and and probably make their day in a lot of cases. That's what a lot of people don't realize with some of this stuff. So I've got another in-person tip we didn't talk about. I can do this quickly. So yeah. um, if you if you strike out at the sound check and there's not an organized after you know, signing. Don't ever forget that there's a lot of times when you can send something backstage. So if you, oh, will, yeah, you, if, you will, yeah. if you will go down to the stage, you will find the guitar tech. 
the guitar tech, the drum tech, the sound guy, if, if they're with the venue, they're no help. But if they're with the band, yeah. if you can find a guy that's with the band, they will take stuff back for you. And if you if you ask nicely, if you say, I'm such a fan of so-and-so, and, if, and would you be so kind as to take this back for me and get it signed, um, you will be surprised how many times that will work. Or if they can't take it back for you, they'll give you a tip. Um, I got a couple it's of stories. Where to wait and how to do it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so I mentioned I mentioned sticks earlier with Dennis DeYoung. I was I was at the show and I asked the guitar tech. I said, "Will Dennis ever sign stuff?" And he said, "Here's all you need to know. Come sail away is the is the last song in the show. During the long instrumental section, Dennis will walk around and shake hands and whatever. If you are standing there with something to sign and a pen in your hand, he will sign it." The sound guy told me he gave me a roadmap. Here's how to get your stuff signed. I so you know it. what I did. I put one record in my wife's hand, one record in my hand, one record in the stranger I just met. Multiple hand. sharpies, and, and yeah, sharpie, and 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 we stood at three points in the stage during the last song, and he bada up, bada up, bada up, signed all three of them, and so you know it, it works. Um, I got I got Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, you know Frankie Valley. So um, he was doing a show. He does. He's notoriously not coming out afterwards, but. I talked to his keyboard player and I said, hey, you know, before the show when he was just tuning up his keyboard and I said, Hey, will you take something back to Frankie? And he's like, sure. And he took three albums back. I'm just Frankie Valley, Frankie Valley, Frankie Valley, and all three of them out. Got um, him right back out to you. Yeah. And I would have never gotten him otherwise. So, so always, you know, use your resources, learn, learn the venue, learn the placement, be there at the early, be there at the right time. Uh, try before, try after, try the staff sometimes. And this works too. Sometimes. The merch guy. A lot of times, the merch guy is with the band. If the merch oh, yeah. is with the band, if you ask nicely, that's all of this comes down to ask nicely. Yeah. Say, hey, you know, if you're going to go back to the stage backstage during the show, would you take a few things back for me to get signed? I'm happy to wait. Afterwards, you can bring it back to me. Um, sometimes I'll even email ahead of time. So you know, like Roseanne Cash, who's Johnny Cash's daughter. So Roseanne Cash, um, I emailed her website way ahead of time and got her manager and i said i'd love to get a stack signed by her and he said oh yeah meet me at the back door you know before you know at this time when we arrive and i'll take it this was during covid so she wasn't seeing anybody but i i was right there where he told me to be i handed him my stack like 15 albums he took it backstage rosen cash rosen cash rosen cash signed every one of them and then gave it back to me that night at, at the start of the show and so oh, you know there's ask for help get to know these people yeah yeah um, even with the venue staff, like venue staff can be a little bit prickly, but if you'll be nice to them and start up a conversation with them and, you know, hey, what kind of music do you like? And, you know, just it's so much harder for them to run you off if you've made friends with them, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, so try and, and if they know you're there for the right reasons, I think that's a big part of it. Is there's, a, there's a lot of stigma, um, you know, with this, because, again, a lot of people just associate it with flipping and value and and making money off the artist. When in reality, there's a lot of people out there. I suspect just like you who literally treasure the music and treasure those, uh, those stories and those moments. And so it's a, it's a cool thing for me to learn more about. Cause again, it's not something I've ever done. And, and I, and I hope this, like a lot of videos I do here on the YouTube, uh, channel is, uh, educational stuff. So this was one of those areas where I certainly wasn't going to be able to talk to it. So it's been super awesome to have you on here, Rex, to kind of download everything you've learned within this, uh, uh, you know, hobby within a hobby, I guess you could, you could say right. in a lot of ways. It really, it really does tie record collecting and, and concert going, you know, it's yeah, a, yeah. between those two things. It's very cool. Well, I appreciate the time, man. This has been awesome. Um, Absolutely. we'll, uh, we'll have to do some follow up stuff on this as you, uh, as you progress in your autograph seeking sure. over maybe, the years. Maybe if this, if this, if this uh, video prompts some questions, maybe we can get together again and answer questions. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Well, All thanks, right. Rex. Appreciate you being here on uh, Talking About Records. We'll uh, we'll see you again maybe next time. And uh, for everybody watching, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in and stick around as always for more episodes of Talking About Records. We'll see you soon.